Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We're headed into our final segment of the day, talking about the teams that did not make the cut for March Madness. That included a handful of Big East teams that had a lot of people up in arms. So we will be breaking down all of that. The selection committee did announce their first four out, which included Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indiana State, and Pittsburgh. Just briefly talking about these teams here. Really unfortunate for Indiana State, where they were 28th in net rating, which is the highest of any program to be left out of the NCAA tournament. They were in a tough position in this year, where they wrapped up their conference tournament, they lost, falling short to Drake, and then they had to sit around for a week and watch all of these other programs go on these bid stealing runs that sort of sucked up the at large spots that would have been available to the likes of an Indiana State, but were no longer there because we had so many unexpected teams guarantee themselves a bid with the conference tournament. But some of these other teams as well, Oklahoma interesting case for them where they didn't lose a single game outside of the first quadrant all season they were 4 and 12 in quad 1 16 and 0 versus everyone else and this was just sort of an example that it's typically more about your wins than your losses when it comes to your resume and as for making march madness and Unfortunately, that was the case for Oklahoma, where out of 13 games that they played versus tournament teams this season, they were just 2-11, and both of them coming at home. So, it's tough. I understand some of the arguments for them, but again, when it comes down to the way that the bubble was sort of diminished, I think that they were right to be on the outside looking in. Also briefly, Seton Hall here. Five games over a 500 record in conference play came out short. That is the first time that ever happened in the history of the Big East Conference, which sort of leads me to this bigger conversation about did the Big East get screwed? Only three teams made the the NCAA tournament this year, UConn, Marquette, and Creighton. That's the least amount that have been representing the Big East since 1993. St. John's, Providence, and Seton Hall all had arguments to be in, were in that bubble conversation for much of the season, and they find themselves on the outside looking in. All of them finished with 20 or more wins. And unfortunately for Providence in this case, relying on your wins alone was not enough to get them in. They had beaten Creighton twice, they beat Marquette once, they also had a win against Wisconsin, but it wasn't enough. And again, like we've sort of alluded to, the problem was how many teams stole bids in winning their conference tournaments where UAB, NC State, Duquesne, Oregon, New Mexico all likely wouldn't have been at large bids if they didn't win their conference and instead they do so that is five less spots available for bubble teams ultimately i do think that it's just sort of the way that everything played out in this circumstance i don't think that it was any sort of a specific dig at the big east which is one of the best conferences in college basketball but Again, the circumstances surrounding those coveted spots just sort of did not play out in the favor of many of these teams that were hoping to make their way in. Now, it's interesting now because of the conversations that come from that, we've talked sort of about the idea of whether or not the NCAA should expand March Madness, where I personally don't believe that they should but do believe that that's the direction we're headed in and it's just sort of the reality of the situation but it is really interesting how i feel like this could be the type of year 
that could lead to change where you have so many people upset about the these solid teams that had good resumes not being able to make the tournament here again expanding it to a certain degree i just feel like it does add all of this drama and intrigue that wouldn't be there and i know you feel upset because the teams didn't end up making it but i also do just feel like it's part of why do we play these regular season games if we're just going to continue to diminish the value of them and 64 teams is a lot it will technically it's 68 even too that make the tournament and i just don't really see a need for it now if you're the ncaa and you're charlie baker who runs the organization the need for you is to make more money because they would make more money we're all sports fans so i can at least speak for myself i would watch the games even though i disagree with the principle of it and it's just interesting to see how this all works i wasn't old enough for the last time that the ncaa expanded but the typical dialogue you get about that time was people were, were up in arms about the idea of making it 64 and that that was too much and that sometimes history can repeat itself in terms of we overreact in the moment and things end up being fine if that's the case so be it i just also don't really see a need for expansion where this year had very different circumstances than usual and i don't think that it means that the product is broken as a whole i don't think by any means it is if it's not broke don't fix it and that's been the case march madness is you know one of probably the top two outside of the super bowl i struggle to think of a sporting event in america at least that takes up more attention than march madness does and i just don't see a need to move on it but it is really interesting to see how the conversation works because again i also don't think it matters what i think what you think it's probably headed in a direction where the ncaa is going to expand regardless but uh, let me know what your thoughts are about that in the comments. I also wanted to briefly touch on the idea of the NIT tournament and some of these programs that feel that they are above it and it's not worth competing in. It's interesting because of the fact, obviously, the NIT. Like, I could not tell you who won the NIT last year. I couldn't even really give you a great guess. I don't care for it myself all too much, but... I do feel like there is something to the culture of the program individually where it's a bit unfortunate to see, and I speak on this because St. John's, Oklahoma, and Pittsburgh have all declined invites to play in the NIT, and the, these were three of the four teams for the first four out. They're all saying that they don't want to play in it, the team that is playing in it is Providence. And what I like about that is just the fact that, you know, maybe Devin Carter doesn't play. He could be a potential NBA guy, who knows. But Kim English comes in with his first year in the program, and he's still sort of developing what it's like to be a part of Friar Nation there. And he isn't sort of taking any shortcuts where I just don't feel that's the same way with Rick Pitino. And Pitino, when he was asked about whether or not they should make it, he didn't sound like he was, you know, overly upset about it, wasn't complaining, griping about it egregiously. I just think that it's kind of lame also to have the season end like this, where he still feels like he kind of has a lot to prove. Obviously, his overall legacy in basketball, not necessarily, but he just got to St. John's, and I, not that I, there's only so long we can hold it over him, but the rant that he went on about his players and saying that they're not good enough, essentially, for him. This is the least fun he's ever had coaching an individual team. 
Sure, they rallied around. They started winning some games. They won six in a row. They fell sh just short to UConn in terms of trying to pull out a Big East tournament win. But I still feel like he sort of has to, should have had to establish himself with the culture there a little bit more. It almost feels like he's just already turning the page on this team. And maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe the players didn't want to be a part of it. I don't know, but I do feel like it's a little bit of a disappointing result. Again, I'm saying this from someone who openly admits I don't watch the NIT tournament. So maybe I'm overdoing it right now with this, but I just feel like for a lot of these programs to act like you're above this tournament where I wouldn't say that any of these programs from Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, St. John's, are at a level where they should feel like they're too good for this tournament. Now, again, maybe it's on the players. We don't really have details as to truly who is behind them pulling out, and that's not something we will ever have, but just wanted to give some thoughts on that. But that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. We will be back tomorrow, same time, 2 o'clock. So we will see you then. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go.